What's up, Droners, and welcome to this week's edition of Droner News. And we have drones taking out cyclists in races, which is hilarious. People dropping themselves from thousands of feet up from drones and other cool stuff. So let's see the cool stuff. Coming up first, and this one is one of those really interesting stories to me. There's a company called Echodyne who is developing a small, lightweight ability for radars on drones. And this isn't something for like prosumers like myself or anything else. This is a actual radar for a drone that'll help it do object avoidance. Now we know that you know a lot of DJI drones and other drones do have object avoidance, whether they're doing that with visual technology or they're doing that with like you know the sonar. This is a whole different ballgame. This is like actually what you know planes use to avoid each other, which the drone will be able to do as well. It'll be able to actually detect fast moving objects from really, really far away. And when I say fast moving objects from really, really far away, this drone this radar can detect a small plane at two kilometers out, a quadcopter, you know, phantom sized drone at about 750 meters and a small bird at like 250. That's a lot of space to be able to maneuver around something. And with object avoidance technology coupled with that radar, you know, this is really helping to be able to create the next level of delivery drones or drones that are flying in airspace where other things will be flying. And this kind of is one of those safety features that's going to have to be in place for us to be able to have drones doing things over long distances in the air for long periods of time and out of the visual line of sight of a pilot directly piloting the drone. So this is really exciting to me because this is the kind of technology that's gonna advance all drone technology. So keep your eye on it. I mean, Bill Gates has his eye on it because he's investing in it. Um, but also, like I said, it's gonna be expensive. It's probably around 20 to 30K per, per unit. Um, but if you're really into that kind of stuff, this is a big deal for you. Coming at number two, we have crashing drones for science. Researchers at the Carnegie Mellon University just recently released a paper called Learning to Fly by Crashing, which is hilarious to me as a camera drone pilot because that is not the way I learned how to fly. But if you ask a racing drone pilot, they might say different on how they did it. But either way, this is actually crazy because they're creating a software that predicts or teaches these drones how to fly and avoid obstacles. Um, so they put them in, a, in 20 different environments and had these drones that had to make decisions about how to get around and get from one point to the other on the one side, like object avoidance and you know, detection and avoidance. And they found out after literally 11,000 crashes that the drones could pretty much figure out how to get around whatever they needed to. After all these crashes, the researchers were super happy with the results. It was really good at navigating around everything except for two things. Definitely had issues with just plain white walls and glass, which in the world there's a lot of glass and plain white walls, but it's a huge step forward, which, you know, coupled with that radar system and other things like this for object avoidance, um, like I said, drones are just getting better for everybody, and I'm really excited to see how far this goes. Coming number three, drone-based jumping. There's a Latavian company called Aerodrones, which specializes in making, like, really big industrial drones, and they kind of just did, like, a big publicity stunt, but they, they're calling it, like, their foray into extreme sports with a base jump. They teamed up with a skydiver named, all right, I'm sorry, brother, I'm so sorry, but Ingus, Ugs, cows, cons. <laughs> All right, whatever. They strapped this dude to a drone that had 28 propellers and put him up to a thousand feet, and then he did a base jump from it, which literally means he just dropped off the drone. The way they did it, as you can see, is he got to the top of this tower, and at the top of the tower, you know, dude grabs on to the drone, the drone picks him up and lifts him, which is really impressive to see, you know, like a 28, I don't even, I was gonna say quadcopter, but 28 blades, I don't even know what that word would be. But either way, taking him, taking him up, you can see the power of it, because as soon as he lets it go, it's just like, it goes up, and it's really cool. Um, but either way, this is cool because of people dropping from drones. The video just was cool, honestly, just to keep it honest. Like, this video just looked cool. I don't really understand the purpose of this. We know drones can lift people. I don't know why base jumping is, like, he didn't even, like, fall for that long. So, I'm sorry, I'm judging, but cool video, check it out, it's worth it. All right, coming to number four. Um, if you guys have enjoyed my drone or fails videos, this one is right up that alley, is that we have a drone who takes out a, a cyclist. <laughs> So there was the, a cyclist taking out the Golden State Race Series, which is obviously a California bike race. And there was like a, a drone pilot trying to film the riders coming down the street and he got too close to the race. Like, I mean, obviously he got too close to the race. And he crashed. Like he avoided a tree and then he crashed. And he didn't actually directly hit anybody when he crashed, but the crash, the rolling of the crash actually uh, tangled up somebody's spokes. Dude went over the handlebars, destroyed his bike. He was okay, but he destroyed his bike. And this one is one of those like, come on, man, like, if you're gonna be flying around people, which you're not supposed to fly over people, you can fly around people, don't fly over people. It's like, you gotta keep it slow and safe as the best of your ability. Like, I hope we had like a visual observer to let them know with like a communication system. Probably didn't. Um, but all I'm saying is if you guys are gonna be flying around, like understand that everything you do reflects on everything everyone of uh, these other commercial pilots does. So things like this can make it so that it's harder for all of us to get insurance and harder for all of us to be able to get jobs because nobody thinks that we can do it. So either way, stay safe. It's funny to watch, which it shouldn't be, but it is. Coming number five. Hey B, 
I have this four pound machine part that I want to deliver 97 miles across Austin, Texas. What will I ever do? Well, if you've been paying attention, a group of researchers just completed that exact length and that exact kind of machine part in Austin. And, well, droners, it's pretty cool, is this, there's a group of researchers that actually did a 97 mile delivery. And you gotta wonder, like, how did they legally get to do that? You know, to be able to get the waiver to do all that. It's like, it seems like a lot of paperwork to work with the FAA and to work with Part 107 to make something like that happen. These guys were smart. What these guys did was they lined up people at distances for the entire 97 mile track to be able to keep it within visual online sight of all these people. So these people were watching it happen. It took like two hours. But they delivered this part and the drone returned back to where it started with no issues at all. And if you've been paying attention to Droner News, like last week we talked about drones being connected to cell towers. Bam, this is an example. This drone was connected to a cell tower and delivered something 97 miles round trip and it made it all look good. So I'm a fan of this. Hey Droners, so thank you for checking this out. But one thing if you could check out for me is I just found out, I know I'm late to the party, came out in February, about the DJI app for the Apple TV where you can just randomly watch drone footage. I did some research. I can't figure out how you can become somebody that gives them drone footage, but apparently just has drone footage to watch just randomly. I don't get it. So maybe you do. Let me know in the comments. And as always, make sure you check out this link over here because this one is going to be the dopest opening video of a drone thing ever. Or you can click here and see some more drone news because drone news is awesome. As always, make sure you subscribe because that allows us to do what we're doing and make sure you stay fly.